Here we have Excel output of a regression analysis with some information erased so we can figure them out. This question seems to be asking for the wind chill temperature and uh, trying to see if you can predict it from the air temperature and wind speed because of course uh, the colder it is, if the temperature is low then you do feel cold uh, but then if there are high winds, then you you, you feel even colder, right? So uh, these two should be uh, used to predict the wind chill temperature. As, as you can see, here we have the air temperature and wind speed to be a factor in determining the wind chill temperature. So if it's asking how many predictor variables are there, there are two variables used to predict it. So the answer is two for this case. Now, how many lines of data are there? Uh, well, uh, the usual Excel regression analysis gives you that value. Uh, but uh, here, because it's not given, you have to figure it out from the degrees of freedom. And this question is really asking you about whether you know the concept of degrees of freedom for multiple regression. OK, uh, so the, the thing that you have to know is that the, the the degrees of freedom for the regression is really the same thing as uh, the number of predictor variables and as you can see because we have two predictor variables air temperature and wind speed uh, that gives you two on the other hand uh, the the total regression is given by n minus 1. Okay. And the residual is degrees of freedom, sorry, I should have said uh, degrees of freedom of the total regression, total. Yeah. Degrees of freedom of total is n minus 1. And degrees of freedom of the residual is something that would add up. So k plus something should add up to n minus 1. So uh, you should do n minus 1 and subtract k from it. So that if you add them together, you the k's cancel and you, you get end up with n minus 1. And here, I forgot to tell you what n is. n is the, the uh, number of lines of data. Or data pairs. Uh, actually it's not data pairs, it's a data triple, so uh, each line of data should give you air temperature, wind speed, and wind chill temperature. And uh, the air temperature will be like x1, wind speed will be x2, and then uh, wind chill temperature, this will be your y hat. And you're trying to express y hat by x1 and x2. So uh, the, the values that you're provided with will be x1, x2, and the actual y value, uh, not the predicted value. Uh, so it will be triple of values. And uh, it seems like because this is 13, the total degrees of freedom is 13. And this is n minus 1. n must equal to 13 plus 1, which is 14. So how many lines of data are there? There's, there are 14 lines of data. Um, so for this one, just, just uh, solve n minus 1 equals to total degrees of freedom. Then you get 14. Write the multiple regression equation. Well, you have to know the gen general form of regression equation. It looks like b0 plus b1 x1 plus b2 x2 and then you had if you had more than x2 uh, let's say there is a third factor here and you got x3 then it would be plus b3 x3 and then plus b4 x4 and so on and so on okay but we just have two predictor variables so this is where you end and because these are the coefficients b0 b1 and b2 we know that uh, it's going to be y hat equals to negative uh, 12.5091 
plus 1.3341 x1 minus 0 0.4143 x2. And if you look at this, uh, all I'm doing is I'm just replacing b0, b1, b2 by these values. And the result is this equation. So that is the regression equation. Now I'm going to need this equation for the next question. So let me take this, copy it. All right. OK. And uh, we are going to need this up here. Let's do E first since we have the reg regression equation. It says predict the wind chill temperature if the outside temperature is 12 degrees and the wind speed is 32. So uh, that's the value. 12 is the value of x1 and uh, uh, 32 is the value of x2. So you just have to plug these into the calculator and whatever that get gives you, that's the answer. Okay. So uh, let's clear. Let's try. Um, so you have negative 12 0.5091 plus 1.3341 times 12 then minus 0.4143 times 32 and you get negative 9.7575 and usually they ask for like uh, three, six, three, three decimal points so let's write as negative 758 negative 9.758 and this is the temperature wind chill temperature is the uh, Fahrenheit so this is this degree is Fahrenheit and uh, what this means is that if the temperature is 12 it's already way below freezing temperature but if you have high winds then it's going to feel even worse so it's like negative so that's a really cold temperature, right? Okay, and then uh, what percent of variation in wind chill temperature is explained by the combination of variables in the regression equation? Well, uh, whenever you at, you're asked what percent of variation is explained, that's the adjusted R squared. So uh, the adjusted R squared, which is 0 0.9912 or 99.12 percent is the amount of variation in the wind chill temperature that's explained by the these two variables in the regression equation okay so that's that's what it is this is a adjusted r squared Okay, F, and this is actually the most challenging part of the question. Determine the overall significance of the predictor variables on wind chill temperature. Um, so this R squared gives you how much of the variation is explained by the regression analysis but uh, you might also consider the question how uh, how much you can trust this result. So that has to be uh, calculated by using the F distribution. And F distribution is a distribution made by taking the ratios of sum of squares, or I actually uh, mean sum of squares, and the, the shapes they look mostly like this some of them go like that but that that's the shape uh, the important thing is that they start from zero okay so that's actually very important to know the f distribution starts from zero and that's because sum of squares can never be negative right okay so the way we are going to do the calculation is first calculate the mean sum of squares and SS stands for sum of squares and uh, the sum of squares when you divide by the degrees of freedom that's mean sum of squares so uh, the first formula you need is number one you need MS equals to SS 
divided by degrees of freedom. And then once you get those two values, then you have to figure out what's the F distribution F value or F test statistic. And that is the, the division of the two values that you just acquired. So it's the top divided by bottom. And you might say uh, it's the mean squares of the regression uh, divided by mean squares of the residual. Uh, but <clears throat> rather than trying to memorize this formula, just say uh, you divide this by this, and that, that goes in here. And once, once those are put in, then you have to use the uh, F distribution, cumulative distribution function to find the area under the curve, just like how we did it for the normal curves. And that will give you the significance of everything. Okay. All right, so let's try to do the calculation by using a calculator. Again, uh, we have 3914.7949 divided by 2, because 2 is the degrees of freedom, right? So it's 1957, 397, 1957.397. Okay. Right, and then uh, the other one is 29... 0.2051 divided by 11, and that's 2.655. And now you simply divide the top by the bottom. So we are going to take this and do 1957.397. Seven divided by 2.655, enter, 737249, 737249, okay, so 737.249. Okay, so we got the F-test statistic, and uh, now we have to use the F distribution to see what value this gives you. And the basic idea is this, uh, the F distribution or FCDF is going to give you the area under this curve from zero to whatever that value is. So you have 737.249, right? And uh, if you feed this in, then it's going to give you the entire area under the curve from zero until here. But our p value or the significance. Uh, the p-value is this other part which is not shaded and therefore the p-value would equal to 1 minus of the FCDF uh, F distributions cumulative distribution function of uh, the area from 0 to 737.249 uh, and uh, this one requires more degrees of freedom than the t-distribution uh, because it the top has the degrees of freedom and the bottom also has degrees of freedom you have to provide both and those are these two values so you put 2 and then 11 and the result is uh, you get well we have to use a calculator to find it out so let's try that uh, you go to 2 well before we do that uh, quit clear okay uh, we will put 1 minus so that we don't forget to do one minus. And then second distribution, and you go to the FCDF. Lower is zero, don't touch that. And you put in 737.249. And then the degrees of freedom of the numerator is two. Uh, the denominator is 11, and you paste it. And you get 1.91. E negative 12, which means it's uh, 10 to the negative 12. So the, the, the answer to this would be 1.91 times 10 to the negative 12. So that's the significance. That's the answer to this F. All right, the last question, construct a 95% confidence interval for the conf coefficient of the predictor wind speed. Well, for this one, you need the formula CI, the confidence interval is equal to bi plus or minus 
the t distribution critical number times the uh, standard deviation of this bi and uh, see we said that uh, this is b b1 that's b2 and because we're looking for the wind speed we're really looking at this one b2 and so in our context we're doing b2 plus or minus t alpha over 2 and uh, you have uh, s of b2 and this one actually can be read off from this that's your s of b2 so uh, if you don't have this then uh, you have to calculate from the there's a way to calculate it from the sum of squares but that's just too much you just you can just do this all right so uh, we have that uh, so what's remaining is that we already have the b2 and sb2 the only thing that's that we don't know is the t distribution critical number and because uh, confidence interval is 95 alpha would be 1 minus 0.95 which is 0 0.05 and to get the t t alpha over 2 this will be inverse of t and uh, you want to know uh, when the area becomes 1 minus alpha over 2 with the degrees of freedom actually uh, that's really important the degrees of freedom should be the residual degrees of freedom okay, maybe I should uh, circle this and put exclamation mark here the regret the see there are three degrees of freedom so it's really confusing which one to use uh, but when you try to get a confidence interval uh, for this coefficient, you use the residual degrees of freedom. And uh, crudely, the reason is something like uh, the, the residuals are like the, the parts that are not explained by the, uh, the regression line. So like this kind of gives you the, the unknown. Uh, so the bigger this value is, the, the more unknown your coefficient will be, the, the confidence interval will be larger and larger, right? So, so uh, in a sense, the residual is the one that's really, the residual degrees of freedom which is the one that will determine the critical value. Yeah? So it's related to this. Okay, hopefully, there was a really rough explanation. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so let's put that into the calculator. And uh, here's second distribution, and we have inverse t, and the area is uh, 1 minus alpha is 0 0.05 divided by 2, and the degrees of freedom in our case was, what? what is it, 11, so we put 11, enter, and that gives you 2.2. 2.201 so 2.201 all right so with 2.201 what do we do uh, now the confidence interval would be uh, b2 is negative 0 0.4143 plus or minus 2.201 times SBI which is 0 0.337 so let's do the calculation. Uh, so this means one, one you have to uh, multiply, uh, add, and the other one you have to subtract. Okay. So let's see. You have uh, negative point four one four three, and then plus. 2.201 okay um, and then we have oh sorry um, okay so we have negative 0.4143 plus 
2.201 times 0.337 and you get uh, Oh, sorry, that's, that's at 0 0.0337. I am missing a zero there. So there should be a zero. So let's do it again. Uh, okay. Negative 0.4143 plus 2.201 times 0 0.0337. And it gives you a negative 3. Four zero one. So negative point three four zero one is the upper bound. Now let's do the exact same thing, but this time we'll subtract. So uh, negative point four one four three minus two point two zero one times point zero three three seven and you get negative 4885 negative 0.4885 okay so that's your confidence interval